it's almost like with with more choice and just too many tools out there it's uh people are getting lost in all oh, of that and lost. and they just they don't so so i mean that's actually a really good point it might even help some young producers to to just limit themselves find a few tools that they really love that they connect with mm-hmm. that, that connecting with them and right. only go deep on those and not have to pull from all the hottest stuff out there right now. If you watch me make beats, I don't know if you watch, anybody watch me on my Instagram, on YouTube, I'll yeah. make beats in 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes. And I'm going to wow. tell you the reason why, the reason why I do that is so I don't get over creative where it's like, but what is that? Like, you know, you start getting too creative and it's like, man, that ain't even, it was hard when you started five minutes ago. Now yeah. it's like you done added so much and so many sounds. It's so big. It's like now nah, it ain't even, you know, don't have the same thing to right. it no more. So that's why it's I that do it, that. The initial inspiration, that initial spark is where the magic comes. Where the magic comes from. Welcome to the new Music Business Podcast. I am your host, Ari Herstand, coming to you quarantined in my home in Los Angeles. This episode today is with superstar hip-hop producer Zaytoven. This guy is one of the most influential producers in hip-hop right now. He's a Grammy winner. He has worked with Future, 21 Savage, Rick Ross, Pusha T, T.I., 2 Change, Lecrae, and Usher. Just to name a few. Honestly, he's worked with everybody. There are a lot of interviews out there with Zaytoven, and I watched a lot of them before this interview, and uh, he's a very insightful guy, and he has a really interesting workflow. I didn't want him to tell the same kinds of stories or give the same answers that he's given on all the other interviews out there, so we dug into what I know you're most interested in. This is the New Music Business Podcast, after all. So we got into his process. And if you're a hip-hop producer, this is a must-listen. He dropped endless gems throughout this episode, giving advice to emerging up-and-coming hip-hop producers. How he did it, but really how you can do it in this day and age as well. We got into strategy. We got into workflow. We got into community. And even his manager, we talked about how uh, he and his manager met and what that working relationship is like. How he worked with all these super star artist that he works with and that was only the beginning he is the godfather of trap he's got a sound and we also dug into how do you get a sound if you're a producer is that even important it was a really insightful interesting interview i'm very excited for you to hear it but as always please subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already you can follow us on spotify you please leave a review on apple Podcasts if you have not done that yet Sign up for the email list at ariestake.com for updates on all future episodes and anything happening in the new music business for independent artists, producers, managers. Follow us on Instagram at ariestake, on Twitter at ariestake. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter, and you can find Zaytoven on Instagram and Twitter. All right, let's cut to the interview. Zaytoven, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. We're quarantined. Where, Where are you right now? Where are you quarantined? Uh, I'm quarantined. I'm, I'm at the house, but right okay. now uh, I'm, I'm specifically in the in my basement studio where I really spend most of my time. Right. How long have you been in this in this space, this studio? This isn't your mama's basement now, right? No, you no, moved no, out of that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I've, I've seen I've seen uh, some old old video from there. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, at this house. I actually only been in this house maybe a year. Okay. So oh wow! I, you I, built up the whole studio down there. Built the whole studio up. Nice. This is like my third home. Uh, but this is the one I'm at now. So yeah, every every house I get, though, I build a studio in. Nice. How many houses has that been? Uh, this is my third house. Okay, and studios in all of them. That's great. So you you must have it down now. You know exactly how to how to I set know it all. Exactly up. how to do. <laughs> I know exactly how to set it up. Where do you, where do you get your panels from? I'm uh, I'm seeing these panels in the background there. Do you have like a a, a relationship with all the uh, the equipment uh, providers for your studios? Man. <laughs> Believe it or not, I have a cousin. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and he's amazing. Every st- he built every last one of my studios. He wow. he come up with these panels. He built his stuff, you know, himself. So, you yeah. know, I don't need nothing else. All I need is him. He gonna have it, you know, perfect. So that's great. That's great. Nice. Um, well, cool. Well, I want to. Uh, I, I want to get into because this is the new music business podcast. We're going to get into some of the business a little bit later, but I want to kind of go back to the beginning because we're going to have we have a lot of um, artists, a lot of producers that listen to this show, and uh, you know they we kind of 
we know the top line stuff about you. We know the headlines. We know all the yeah. kind of the cushy interviews that have been done with all the, uh, the publications out there, which is great. And that's cool. But mm-hmm. like all the artists and producers that are, are listening to this, they're looking for guidance. Mm-hmm. You know, they're looking for, um, you know, how to get started, um, you know, and they might think they have the talent, but they don't know, they don't have the direction. Yeah. And so they see someone like you that's so successful and has been through so much and has probably tripped a lot along the way, but we don't mm-hmm. necessarily hear about that or yeah. see that. And mm-hmm. we're all like so many artists and producers are tripping along the way. And we're like, man, I bet Zaytoven never had to do this or follow <laughs> that, you know? So like back when you were in the Bay Area, uh-huh. um, I know you grew up playing keys in the church. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm curious how you got started actually making beats, producing, uh, and just kind of how that all be- began. The way I started making beats is... Uh, I went to the high school in San Francisco, California, called Galileo High School, and we mm-hmm. didn't have a real band. So, at the football games, I would be in the stands, and I had my keyboard, and I had my my buddy of mine that played the drum, and we'd mm-hmm. just be playing songs, playing songs that you probably hear on the radio. Mm-hmm. You know, like at, at you know at, in the game, like oh, he playing the Jay Z song. He you know he was <laughs> yeah. looking for that. So uh, the guy by the name of JT, the bigger figure, mm-hmm. he was at one of the football games. He had his own studio. He already had his own record label and everything. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you dope on the keys. I want to bring you to the studio. He brought me to his house, his own studio, and started showing me. This is how you make the drum machine work with the, uh, communicate with the keyboard. Wow. It's how you put it all together, put it in Pro Tools, and put it on tape. And that's how you hear, you know, what you done done. So that mm-hmm. was it, man. I would go to his house every day and just sit there and play and make beats. That's how I started wow. making beats. You know? And were you, what programs were you using at that time? You said Pro Tools, and then what were you making the beats in? I always use the MPC, uh, Kai okay. MPC. I'm still on that. Matter of fact, I don't know how to use nothing else. No shit. I don't wow. know if that comes from being lazy. I don't know if it comes from Because <laughs> I tried other stuff. I tried Logic before. I tried the yep. machine and stuff before. Because companies will send it to me like, here, man, try mm-hmm. this out. It's sure. like, oh, nah. Let me just go back to the NPC. NPC, tried and true. Yeah. That's it. Tried nice. and true. That's my, <laughs> nice. That's my so, so it's re- yeah, so JT really guided you through that early process. Um, do you think it's important for uh, producers, younger producers, to kind of have mentors like that uh, to, to learn from? It's hard to say, man, because I meet so many guys now mm-hmm. that, I mean, they're really they more advanced than I am, you know what I mean? Because they, mm-hmm. they, they know the tech stuff real good. Um, the program they're using is almost making the music for you. Mm. And then they got all the sounds. They got the Zaytoven kits. They got the whoever the big right. producer kits already. So it's yep. almost like it's not. I don't know if it's a need for guidance really as sure. much now. You know what I mean? Because it just they so, got YouTube. They can learn they all the YouTube. lessons on YouTube. <laughs> they learn it so easy. It's like you know. Yeah. Mm. So, mm-hmm. It's hard to say. That, no, that makes sense. Um, I mean, you, you talk about the the kits and kind of the the packs and the plugins and all that stuff. And uh, I mean. Early on, when you were making these beats, um, were you selling them early on just directly to artists to use your beats, or or how did that process work early on? Or were artists just were you like linking with artists and you guys would work on a release together? Well, at first, I would just you know I just wanted somebody to rap on my music, sure. so I grab all my little friends from high school. I make some beats. We I got a karaoke machine in my in my room. <laughs> hey, y'all come here. I plug the mic into it. Put two nice. tapes, you know, put one tape in here, one yeah. tape in here to record, play the beat off this one, record on that one. And that's mm-hmm. where I start. I used to I used to walk to school with my radio on my shoulder and playing mm. the songs that I was, you know, recording at the house on my karaoke machine. Yeah. And then before <laughs> you know it, I have guys that, man, let me give you fifty dollars, man. I want to beat. A hundred dollars. Wow. start, you know, it started turning into that. So oh, man. Day, I, I used to make extra money to selling beats for a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. Damn. You know, stuff like that. So. That's a great calling card. Just the stereo on the shoulder. The stereo <laughs> yeah, on the shoulder. Right, right. Yeah. We yeah. got here in, in Venice Beach. I don't know if you've ever been to the beach, but people, you know, they walk around with uh, with headphones or like listen to the music and then they got their CDs that you, they try to, you know, sell them right there. I know you were doing that a bit. Uh, was okay. it when you first got to Atlanta? Kind of, uh, you were kind of selling uh, selling your mixtapes that way? Man, when I could put a, when I can put some on a CD, I thought that was the yeah. greatest thing in the world. <laughs> you know, I can get somebody a CD with my music on it. Right, so, right. Yeah, I was selling that, man. I was selling beat. I was, now, when I got to Atlanta, 
I would put like 40 beats on on a disc. You know, mm. they all be like a minute and a half or something. And I just give them out to all the, anybody that rap, here yeah, man, take these beats, rap on these beats. That's mm -hmm. what kind of helped get my name, you know, start getting my name popular too. It's cause like, oh, that's Zay Talk. That's the guy with the beats. He's giving everybody all the beats. So yeah. uh wow. man, I could sell CDs with my mixtape. It had me rapping on it. Me, my yeah. little brother, my cousin. You right. know, it, it, that's how I was. <laughs> right, so, right. I had a Anyone big song. Find. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how long after you got to, because I know, uh, what, you moved to Atlanta, was it your senior year of high school? It was uh, 1999. I actually just okay. graduated high school. So. Oh, okay, gotcha. And then, um, you know, now that you kind of have the skills that you learned from JT and just from what you were doing uh, back in, in San Francisco, um, did it take you a little bit to kind of get your footing in this new city, uh, not really probably knowing anybody? How did, you, how did you get started there in the music community? Uh, man, I always looked at music. Me having my own studio was really for my own pleasure, for mm. my little brother, for my cousin, for my friends that's down the street. It mm. was like a, you know, it's like having a basketball at the basketball rim at the at the house. Everybody want to come and shoot basketball. That's what yep. the studio was for me. We was doing it, you know, just for our own personal enjoyment, and mm. it spread. It's like the name and the music. I guess start spreading when people like, hey man, shout it down there. Say so told me, you know, he got a studio at his mama house, but he got them beats. And it just started <laughs> spreading like that. So people, yeah. like, more people like, hey, man, I want to come on and get some beats. Yeah. Before yeah. you know it, man, I swear to you, I had maybe 15 cars just lined up down my mom's <laughs> street. People wow. just waiting to come and get a beat from me. Wow. Wow. You know? So, I mean, that's the thing. It's when you have the talent, you have the foundation, things seem to move pretty quickly because yeah. word gets out. Uh, I think what a lot of young producers, they might struggle with, they don't know if they're ready yet. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there any advice that you can give to young producers uh, to know if they're ready to start sharing their music and uh, kind of spreading it around? Uh, what, how, how do they know? Uh, I mean, I, I definitely always tell producers to try to try to find you an artist, somebody that's, that you feel that's close to you or somebody mm. that you feel like is, that's dope and that's willing to work with you every day. That's like want to come to your house and record with you and they love your beats and they think you the greatest thing in the world. Yeah. To me, that's the first step. But that's yeah. what I had. I had that with my little brother. I had that with Gucci before he was Gucci where they just like, man, Zay, you the best. I just want to come on and rap on your beats all day. And yep. it kept giving me confidence to be like, oh, I'm ready to do this. I'm ready to mm. have my beats to everybody because I got somebody right here that just love my beats. They rapping on every beat I make. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I think that that alone give give producers confidence, and it helps them create a sound. I think what we don't have now is producers having a sound because mm. it's so much technology and it's so much stuff given to these guys where you just all you can do is sound like somebody else. You can't right. make your own sound no more. So. Well, so, so, I mean, that's a great point. How do you recommend producers find their sound? Are there any tactics that you can help people with? <laughs> it's so hard now, man, to say it's because yeah. it's like, like you say, I, like I'm producing now. I'm still on the MPC, but now sure. I'm using BSTs and, and things of that nature. And it it's mm -hmm. so many sounds. You'll get mm -hmm. lost in the sauce. As a producer, as a creative person, you'll get lost in the sauce with this stuff. Mm -hmm. Like back when I had the MPC and one keyboard, I know my sounds I'm going to to make the beats I like. You know what I mean? I know mm. the drums I'm going to use because it's all I got. And that's what helped me make a sound. That's what helped create a Zaytoven sound. Uh, now it's just so all over the place. It's just, you know, it's hard I to mean, tell somebody how to make a sound. Right. Well, that's it. I mean, you bring up a good point. It's almost when you had limitations yes. you were able to work in the, the confines of those limitations and it actually opened up your creativity it because is, you yep. you only had these tools in front of yep. you to work with you didn't have everybody's tools exactly and now it's almost like with with more choice and just too many tools out there it's uh people are getting lost in all oh. of that and lost. and they just they don't so so I mean that's a, actually a really good point. It might even help some young producers to to just limit themselves, find a few tools that they really love that they connect with, mm -hmm. th that connecting with them, right. and only go deep on those and not have to pull from all the hottest stuff out there right now. If you watch me make beats, I don't know if you watch anybody watch me on my Instagram on YouTube. I yeah. make beats in ten minutes. 
five, 10 minutes. And I'm going to wow. tell you the reason why, the reason why I do that is so I don't get over creative where it's like, but what is that? Like, you know, you start getting too creative and it's like, man, that ain't even, it was hard when you started five minutes ago. Now yeah. it's like you done added so much and so many sounds are so big. It's like, now nah, it ain't even, you know, don't have the same thing to right. it no more. So that's why it's I that do it, that. The initial inspiration, that initial spark is where the magic comes. Where the magic comes from. Yep. Wow. Wow. That's why I do that. People think I be trying to be arrogant. Of, it's not that. It's like I know <laughs> right. if I make it fast, then I'm not. You know, I'm not. I get to go. I get to doing too much. I get to playing with too many toys. And yep. now I didn't lost. I don't even know what the beat sound. <laughs> the beat yeah. sound crazy now. So. Right. 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 Uh, now, I mean, that's a that's a great point. So it's it's almost like that. That's another limitation kind of that you've set on yourself it's just the, the 10 minutes and and I, i'm kind of noticing a pattern here is kind yeah. of you're finding you know where the zaytoven sound comes from it's not just the the physical the mpc it's not just those tools but it's that you create your beats in 10 minutes yeah. and then like that's done you stamp it that's out that's out yeah interesting um so i mean you mentioned i wanted to kind of go back to what you were saying when you were uh, saying you start with uh teaming up with somebody who believes in you and and mm-hmm. uh, who wants to work with you every day because i think a lot of young producers um they they want to try to aim for the biggest names in the business from the get-go because yeah right you know that's exciting and that, that's yeah. like they see there's that's success and i want to be yeah. that so let's just go straight to the source but what you're saying is you started with your immediate community, your brothers, your, yeah. your friends on the scene. Gucci yeah. wasn't Gucci when you started yeah. working with him. Exactly. And so I, I like, I want to hit that point for the young producers. Cause that's so important that you start with your local community, you start with the people around you and you find somebody who believes in you and guys can grow together. Exactly. Yeah. That's great. I love that. I love that. Um, so I'm curious, uh, you know, when you, I'm curious if your workflow has shifted um, over the years. So like when you first in Gucci Mane and you first started working together, I think I read somewhere that you guys would get started like seven in the morning or something crazy. (laughs) Um, Are you still creating as much and, and working every day on music like you were back, back in the day? Uh, I'm doing it more, probably even more now. Wow. And it's just it's just an appetite. I didn't built the appetite up so much that, you know, I remember working with Gucci not too long ago, and I was mad at him. Like, bro, mm-hmm. we only did two songs. What we, like, let's go. <laughs> we got the most songs to make. <laughs> he don't yeah. have, he don't feel like he got to do that no more. Me, I was like, man, I don't, I don't, I'm not comfortable with if we've been in the studio with each other and we made one or two songs. Mm. It's like I want to, I want to get in my car and listen to the eight songs we did. To yeah. know if we did, even did something special, it might be seven songs that loud. It was cool that like, but it might be one special song in there, and it, it makes you excited to work all you know work tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You know that's just how I am, and and I still had mm-hmm. an appetite. If you watch on, if you go to my Instagram right now, you see me making beats at set yep. 8, 30, 8, 8 o'clock this morning. Yeah. You know, even without an artist, I'm still doing that because I, you know I still have the hunger to to do that. So I'm still do you work mostly it. when you're when you're linking with with artists. Um, do you create the beats on your own and then send them to an artist or does an artist come into your studio and freestyle over it and then you kind of collaborate on um, the beats? Do you ever, uh, or, or is it always an artist comes in, you create that beat in 10 minutes and then you guys just go? It's so crazy, man, that <clears throat> I sit here and make beats all day. I can make 10 beats today, right? And they right. can be probably some of my best beats. Yep. If Future come in here right now today, he don't want to hear none of those beats. Make right. something I want to make you want you to make it from scratch. It's like, man, I made the hardest beats in the world. Right, I right. From scratch. You know, and that's okay. and so I'm, I'm accustomed to that. And the reason, sure. another reason why I make the beat so fast is because the rappers, they impatient. Once they hear an idea, they hear the sound. Like, I yep. like that. I'm ready to record. So you mm-hmm. don't got time to start, you know, adding too much stuff and start getting too creative. It's because sure. they like, you know, they like it already. So mm-hmm. it's like, man, bounce that down. Let me rap on it. Yeah. It's the magic in the room. It's, it's, the it's magic in the room. because it's, I mean, it really has something uh, when another energy is in the space and when yeah. there's that other energy in the space and you're creating right there, it is influencing what you're creating. It is. It is. 
even if, if they're just standing right next to you, not saying a word, just sensing that energy is going to be funneled into that beat. And they know that too. That's why they, they want that. to have that. Yeah, that's, right. why they that's why they <laughs> right. want it. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, there's a lot of, uh, and even the conversation that happens before the beat or mm-hmm. before the creation process happens, that's, that inspires everything. So, I mean, that makes sense, but I understand like you make 10 beats a day, you're sitting on all the, all of this incredible stuff. You know, what are you going to do with that? Yeah. Um, so, so let's like dig into that side, like kind of the business a little bit behind all of this. You have all of this music, all of these beats. Mm. What happens to them? Do you send them out? Do you put them on splice? Are you sending them to your publishing company? Like what happens to all these beats where an artist isn't necessarily cutting them with you on the spot? Them, these are the beats I send to artists that I don't really get to work with, you know, okay. as much. You know what I mean? A lot of times, like, I just got the phone with Rich the Kid. Like, send me some beats. It's like, oh, I got 10 fresh ones I just made. You cool. know, just waiting for you. You know, yep. uh, you know, a lot of those beats that, a lot of beats I make by myself, I probably wouldn't make when an artist is here. So that's my chance to make a West Coast sounding beat. Or that's my chance to make some different vibes. That mm. So when somebody called me, I have that beat. You know, I had that type of style for them to, to, for them to rap on. So. When people are calling you, are they they want the Zaytoven sound, I'm assuming, because they're coming to you and you have such a distinct sound. Mm-hmm. Um, but now as, as music has been evolving, I mean, you're, you're the, the godfather of trap music, you mm-hmm. know? Uh, mm-hmm. I, it, it's, it, you have such a sound. Um, I remember hearing uh, Cassius J saying, trap music equals Zaytoven, like that's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, but, but we're evolving and, and you know, you, mm-hmm. like uh, they say, innovate or die. Mm-hmm. And do you feel that, pressure I'm, I'm curious about the balance in between having the Zaytoven sound and that being what you've coined and that's why people are coming to you mm-hmm. with the pressures maybe to innovate and kind of expand on that sound where do you think about that at all uh always man I'm okay. a guy that I love toys when I say toys is it's drum machines it's sound it's just new yeah. sound and stuff one thing I, I, I felt like I've done pretty good with is I done made the same beats for the last 10 years. I mean, the same beats. But I add different sounds to them where it sounds like, man, that's the same beat, but it sounds a little different. Mm. I was I just did a song uh, for Young Scooter, Rick Ross, and 2 Chains, right? Mm-hmm. And I swear, this beat, I done made this beat a million times. The same beat. <laughs> but to them, like, bro, this is the heart. This is the song. This is the one. Uh, and it's like, bro, that's the one. That's I didn't, you done heard that a million times. So what wow. I have learned, what I learned from that is I remember me trying to get extra creative, you know, before. Mm-hmm. You know, when I started getting new sounds, I remember uh it's like, well, let me show that I can do all this because I'm a musician. So let mm-hmm. me show I can make make this, you know, bigger than what people done heard. Mm. As soon as I started doing that, people didn't respond to my beats really like you know like they used to. Interesting. It's like say where the where the other beat, where the hard beats, or even when I start working with Usher or you know bigger artists. Yep. And I send them something that's like, man, I made something that's so cold for you. It got this, you know, it's beautiful and it's yep. big. They're like, yeah, this sounds cool, man. But can you send me the beats that you've been doing for Migos? And <laughs> so it just it made me be like, you know what? Yep. Let me get it. This is what the this is what the people want. Let me give them yep. what they want. You mm. just find different ways of recooking that, and that's what it is. That's uh, that's great. I mean, that makes a lot of sense, and that's uh, it. It makes me think about kind of the producers who who chase. They're mm-hmm. chasing the hottest new sound, or they they hear an artist and they're like, "I'm gonna make a sound just like that for that artist right. for the artist yeah. for the artist." And then the artist, they, they talk to that artist and like, well, no, I want your sound. Your sound, yeah. That's exactly <laughs> right. what it is. That's exactly, yeah. And so I think it, it keeps coming back to that point of it's so important to have a sound and have an yeah. identity. And that's, that's, that's the thing. It's just like you have such an identity to your music. And there's a lot of producers out there, um, especially the younger ones who are mm-hmm. chasing and exactly. trying to kind of make everything. And maybe they're really, really good at making, at kind of, um, I don't want to say copying, but but kind of uh, being able to recreate other producers' sounds. They are. They are. But then they have no identity. And so they're just a dime a dozen. And nobody really is thinking to go to them directly. Direct. That's exactly. I, I preach that all the time. I mm. preach that to every producer. It's like, 
it's producers probably have more plaques than I got. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But don't nobody know who they are or don't nobody even care. It's almost like, you know, mm-hmm. that ain't, I'm not looking for you. You know, mm-hmm. you send me a beat or whatever that sounds like somebody else stuff, but I made a hit to it. So that's cool. But yep. to have a name, to be a, a wrecking force in this game, you had to, you have to have an identity yes. and a sound. So that's what I try to preach to every, you know, every up and coming producer. Mm, that that makes a lot of sense. And you know what helps create that? What's that? Is that artist that I'm telling you, you got to link with an artist. The reason why my sound is what it is is because Gucci Man. It's like I made a sound that, you know, with this guy right here. Huh. So we come in the game with a sound. It's a chemistry where people are like, I like that. Wow. You know what I mean? So that's yep. what it is. You got to have an artist to even attach yourself with, you know, to create that sound to me, I feel like. I- I mean, that's great. And that, you know, it's, it, it can be a lonely place in the studio by yourself. And so mm-hmm. I like that you're saying, you know, it, a lot of your sound was somewhat inspired, influenced by the collaboration that you had it with Gucci yep. early on, because that was a, a very formative time in your journey uh, mm-hmm. early on in Atlanta, just kind of getting started, figuring out your place in music. Yep. And here comes this, uh, initially he was, what just like a manager helping his nephew or something but then yeah. like you know he turned into a you know uh the artist himself but but really just kind of a collaborator and it was really just yeah. somebody you liked collaborating with that Collaborate, you guys yeah. created that sound so it's like really important to find those those collaborators that's cool yeah. um getting to the uh you know you release music uh under your own name all the time i mean it's it's an understatement to say that because I think I, <laughs> I think I've counted sixteen releases just in the first few months of twenty twenty, yeah. And we're not talking singles. I mean, I'm talking like projects, full on projects, yeah. uh, just on your own profile. Not to mention the other artists Artist, that you're uh, producing for. I mean, you're incredibly prolific. But I'm curious about the strategy of uh, releasing your own music and if you put any weight on some pro- more weight on some projects than other projects uh, because you have very large collaborators and artists who are featured on a lot of these projects, but you put out 16 releases just under your own name this year. It's like, I, I you know, how do any of these see, uh, you know, what's, what's the, what's the focus behind them and what's the strategy on releasing so much music? Uh, the strategy for me is, a lot of this is just like an underbed for Zaytoven. All these projects okay. that I put out, I don't really promote them as much. They're just okay. music that's just sitting in my hard drive that's been sitting here for just forever. Mm. And it's like, at least I can do it, just give it to the people that, you know, somebody might pick them up and, you know, want to listen to them. Mm-hmm. These, are not, these are not albums or projects that I'm focused on because I have big albums and projects that's coming out that I'm focused on. Sure. So I'm kind of want to, you know, I'm kind of one of one of the guys that want to be like, okay, Zay Tobin is doing it on a level down here, but then he's doing it on a level over here where mm-hmm. it's like he's just everywhere, you know. Mm-hmm. He just mm-hmm. put out a full Dolby project, you know, that was sitting in his hard drive, but now he got a project with, you know, what I mean, the biggest mm-hmm. artist coming out, and and I I got so much music, I got so much stuff that it's like I don't feel comfortable just holding on to it after yeah. it's been two years. It's like, man, here. Take the stuff. If y'all want it, listen to it. Take because I, because I, you know, it helps me to keep creating more. Cool. That makes sense. I mean, it's nice. You're not super precious about nah, any of that that precious. you're putting out. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's nice to hear because, especially at least on the artist side, um, it, you know, a lot of artists, um, they will focus on one album, one mixtape, one project, one single for a year or two or three forever and it's never finished and it's like you know maybe what is kind of your advice to people how do you finish something to the point where this is ready to get out um i'm definitely not a perfectionist so i'm the type of guy that if we did a song right here today Mm -hmm. and it got all the verses on it and the Mm -hmm. song is three minutes hey let's go shoot a video for it and put it out. <laughs> I Just mean, let's, go. Video, let's go. Let's go. Because <laughs> right. that's what excites me about making it. It always makes me feel like tomorrow I can make something harder than what we did today. Mm. You know, it makes me feel like, oh, that's out already. We, I can't, you know, cherish that no more. I got to come up with something harder. And it just keep me chasing. I can do better than what I've done already. And that's the reason I treat it like that. I love that. So you're almost competing with yourself. Nobody People else. Must. I want to yep. make something better today than I made yesterday. Yesterday. 
That's incredible because I want to keep coming back to that saying that's the best song I didn't make. Hey man, that song is over. Mm. I, I got to make something else that's harder than that. So. You keep challenging yourself. That's yeah. probably why I mean, it's like when you get into the studio every day and you're like, I got to make something harder than what I made yesterday. That's, that's probably what's keeping you going. That's the high. That's the high that I'm chasing mm. every day. Even wow. just making beats. You know how you can make beats like, ooh, that beat was hard. Yeah. It's like, man, tomorrow when I wake up, first thing I'm doing, I'm going to make, I got to make some harder than what I did yesterday. Wow. And that's, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Um, so in terms of, uh, you know, I, <laughs> do you spend or do your kids or anyone you know spend any time on TikTok? Do you know about TikTok? Do you know what this is? <laughs> Listen, my little girl is the TikTok queen. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah, so she makes me, I just started doing TikTok. It's just hard to, but she make me do it. So I'm glad yeah. she on it. How old, how old is your, your, he's your 11. 11. And okay, that's, right. She lives, that's, that's, she lives with TikTok. That's the thing. I haven't really gotten too deep into it yet, but you know, all, a lot of the dances and the, and the sing along, the lip sync and all that stuff, you know, especially from the beginning of TikTok, it was all around trap. And that's uh -huh. what's so interesting is that just the, where the beat drops and where kind of trap is, a, a, uh, kind of formatted in this way that works so well on the platform in terms of just the editing style and all of that. And that's why, you know, had to ask the Godfather of Trap, it's like, where is where you, where you're, uh, you know, think about TikTok because it's like on everyone it. on TikTok is right, right. It's just like, it's all about trap. Yeah, that's I'm on it now, man. I just got my, my daughter come to me and show me, oh, daddy, you going viral. Like I got right. 200,000 likes or something on something. So she's right. like, oh, look what you're doing. It's like, man. That's, so. that's hilarious. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... With um, you know, you've been in a, how how long you've been in Atlanta now? Uh, since ninety nine. Since ninety nine. Okay. Wow. So uh, yeah, just over twenty years. Um, what what do you think? Um, kind of the identity of the city of Atlanta is now versus maybe what it was twenty years ago, and how has it evolved? And why have you chosen to stay in Atlanta? Man, I've been moving all my life. Yeah. And Atlanta has, has been my favorite place to live. Hmm. It's just, to me, it's, it's, it's country, but then it's city at the same time. You know, it's hmm. a place where you can, you, you, you get your bang for your buck. You can have mm -hmm. a backyard and a, and, a, and a quiet family life. At the same time, you can run the streets at night and be this, you know, like a Hollywood celebrity star out here at the same time. <laughs> sure. You know, it has, it has both sides. You know, yeah. rather than living in California, it's just it's moving so fast all the time. Or yeah. I used to live in Mississippi where it's like ain't nothing going on. Right. <laughs> so Atlanta right. is just like the perfect balance for me. So, uh, I mean, I just love it. I, I couldn't move nowhere else, I don't think. You know what I mean? Oh, it's great. Nice place to raise a family. Yes, sir. Perfect. That's great. And the music, man, to me, it's almost like I, since I've been living in Atlanta, I didn't seen, I didn't seen Atlanta music be – Outcast, where it's artsy music, I done seen it be gangster trap music, you know, like with mm -hmm. Jeezy and Gucci I done, and T.I. I done mm -hmm. seen it be snap music, I done seen it be dance music, I done seen it be crump. It's like Atlanta has almost every element that you And can gospel, actually. like with Lecrae. Oh, I mean, gospel, you, I mean, come on. It's and every, then in the, every element. Right. So that's, yeah. what, that's what makes it, that's what mm. I mean, I think that's what makes the city so powerful. Yeah. Um, and so what was, uh, I know you, you worked with Lecrae a little bit, um, oh, yeah. and how did that relationship start and, uh, how did you guys link up and, and when was that? Uh, this was last year. This is crazy. Cause I won a dub award, which is like a Grammy in the gospel, uh, arena. Uh -huh. And I remember hearing about the, the gospel artist Lecrae. I, he yeah. like, cause I'm a gospel guy. That's all I do uh -huh. is listen to gospel music. I listen to more gospel music than I listen to anything. Yeah. But I don't listen to gospel rap. You know what I mean? I listen to gospel music. Right. So, and they was telling me about, and I was like, man, I don't really listen to gospel rap. I don't really like it like that because, mm -hmm. you know, I do rap music. So it's almost like I don't really, you know, I don't really care right. for it like that. So I was hearing about him. So then when I met the guy, uh, I forgot how, I remember meeting him at the studio. I don't know who, who hooked it up. Mm -hmm. But we met at the studio and we instantly clicked like, oh, this is mm. my bro. You know what I mean? Cool. It's like we've been yeah. knowing each other forever. We're in the studio kicking and laughing. I play some beats for him. He's like, oh, okay. 
he like about five or six beats that's like he wanted to use for a project. Yeah. But then it was like, you know how I am. I'm a, I feel like my strength is in doing a collaborative project with a person rather sure. than my song, three, two or three of my songs on your album. Mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, I feel like my songs stand out so, so much where it almost need a whole project to get the feel of what I'm doing. If you get what I'm okay. saying. Yeah. Yeah. That makes it's crazy, sense. man. It's like, right. I, like <laughs> I can work with somebody and it's like, dang, bro, we did all these songs and ain't none of them make your album. Mm. It's like, because the songs I did with you is an album in itself. That's how yeah. I look at it. So, and I look at it, you know, that's my thing now. So I tell the crowd, I say, you know what? We might as well just do a whole project. Forget doing two, three songs on your album. Right. Let's do a Beethoven and, and Lecrae project. And it was just like that. He was like, okay, bet. Let's do it. Cool, cool. The next couple of days, we were just knocking it out. That's great. And that's great. And 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 just flowed. It just kind of man, yeah. listen. Well, anytime I work with any artist, we'll get yeah. in the studio for maybe four days, four yeah. or five days, and we got we got something to choose from. Like, man, this gonna make it all these gonna, you know, what's gonna make wow. it. Wow. Cool. So. I'm curious, when you're working on a full project with an artist, um, do you have like uh just the the mechanics of how it's it's working? Do you have a whiteboard up? Do you put the do you put the names on anything or how do you keep track of everything? Just on the just on the computer? It's just off the muscle, man. It's like just off the anytime, muscle. It's just off the muscle. Like when I worked with Usher, I remember sitting there when me and Usher did the A project. Mm-hmm. I was just already like amazed that he called me and wanted to do a project. I'm like, oh, for <laughs> sure. I'm on the next thing smoking. <laughs> right, right. So what we tried to do is get in there, play some beats I already had and some ideas. And you can tell it just that ain't how it works. Yep. I'm the type of guy when I'm in the studio with a with a person and we're working on a project. Hey man, mm-hmm. turn the keyboard on the drum machine on. Let me just start making something. You start writing a song and let's just record. Mm-hmm. Let's not let's not even worry about how good the beat is, how good the song is. Let's just start knocking out songs. Mm-hmm. Before you know it, you'll listen back like, boy, we got some heat. Yeah. But I'm used to recording like that. I almost get uncomfortable when somebody's looking for the biggest beat or the biggest song, you know, when we first get started, like, let's get, let's just start, let's just start working and see what, it, you know, what happens. Mm. You know? And that's how I feel like we get, you know, I feel like that's how we get our best music. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So you, you've kind of gotten into a, a routine and a flow and you just like, you know, I mean, you call the kind of the, the muscle, you know, the how, muscle. how it all goes. So do, uh, with different artists and different collaborators, do they lean on you and kind of turn to you for the guidance and, and just, you just kind of drive the whole train? They do. Okay. You know, I see, but believe it or not, you have to desensitize the artists because these are some <laughs> big artists. These are the biggest yeah. artists almost, you know, in the world, right. in our yep. hip hop community. So they looking at you as in, you know, like, bro, you sure you know what you do? You sure right. you know what you're doing? <laughs> And I always look at them like, hey, man, you called me. I didn't call you. You right. called me. So let me just do what I do. And my, yep. my thing is just to, 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 to break the atmosphere is just to start creating. You creative, mm. I'm creative. Let's just start creating. And let's, just, let's try to create as many songs as we can in this day and yep. come back and do it tomorrow. Love it. And watch how nice. comfortable everybody start getting. That's when you see people get excited. By day two, they so excited. It's like, yep. man, we, we need to put this out next week. Right. You know what I mean? A lot yeah. of people are not used to creating like that. Mm. A lot of people, they, they were looking for a hit record. They want to make the hit record as soon as you come in the studio on the first song. Yeah, right, like, right. Let's not look at it like that. Yeah. Let's look at it the same way I make a beat. I'm not going to think about it. I'm just going to make it. You mm-hmm. come up with a song and let's just keep creating. And whatever special is going to come. That's interesting because the uh, the – how quickly the process moves, the creation process moves. They get so inspired by that speed. That it's almost speed. they want that speed in their business too. And so they kind of want to take that song. It's like, let's just get it out. And you're yep. inspiring the speed yep. with all of that, that they might not necessarily be used to, which is cool. Yeah. Um, so I want to actually get into the business a little bit and the, the release process and strategy and all of that. Um, tell me a little bit about what is uh, Familiar Territory Records? Is that something that you have much involvement with? Familiar Territory Records is my record label, okay. which I started before I even, it wasn't even a real record label, just something I called my company. When I was at the house making beats and I had my little brother and them rap. It's like, yeah, yeah we from the territory. I'm the CEO. <laughs> this is my company. I ain't even yeah. have it, you know, like a real business or nothing. It's just, you know, I was calling at that ever since the beginning. 
Like cool. Gucci was was Gucci was saying for me a territory in his early songs because it's mm. like he want to be my artist, so it's like yeah. you know. So I just stuck with it and roll with it. Now that yeah. I have, I have a real company and a real label, it's like I'm still using the same thing. Nice. Are you uh, involved in the day to day, or are there other people that are kind of uh, overseeing it? And do you have other artists and, and kind of what's what is uh, what's the structure of that? Oh, uh, I have two people. Well, I really have three people. Uh, two guys. Like my managers is uh, Roland Williams, mm-hmm. and Al Roland Williams. Uh huh. And then my lawyer, Carl Washington. It's like cool. these are the same people I've been working with from, you know, forever. And yeah. we just create. Uh. So let's, I want to talk about Roland a little bit. Uh, how did you meet Roland Williams, your manager? And, uh, and what has that relationship been like with, with, with a manager? Roland Williams was my first cameraman. <laughs> this is my guy that's shooting all my videos. You know, that's when he came in as a as a video yeah. guy. He know how to put the videos together. He nice. helped me start my YouTube. So he wasn't wow. a manager. I never had a manager. Sure. Me creating uh, me creating who Zay Token was, I never had a manager. Mm. It's just me, you know, out here doing my thing. I'm making building my own relationships. Yeah. Uh and there's a big word of mouth about Zay Token because the way I move. Right. You know what I mean? So he earned, you know, it, you know, as a guy that's been doing that with you for so long and helping you grow, mm. it becomes a friendship more than it's like, I can't, I can't do it without this guy. So mm. he's got to help me get to where I'm at. So he need to put, I need to have him in position. You sure. know, went from a cameraman to bringing shows to the table, get my YouTube page started, bringing beat people want to buy beats, you know, a lot of different things. So it's like, Oh no, we need to keep it. He need to be a right. manager. Now. Right. You know I mean? Right. So that's what it it was a natural progression. That's cool. Natural. I love that because also a lot of young producers, they think I need a manager. So let me go to the top. Let me see who all these big, everybody want, everybody want everybody. Right. Right. But it's like, it's inspiring to hear from you that everyone who has been either on your team or how you got started, it was all with just the people who were around you, the immediate circle that you kept people that were filling needs that you had at the time. Like that's, I think a lot of artists miss that in that, uh, you know, you need to make a video. So you need somebody to make that video. And you're just like, the goal isn't to be a superstar tomorrow or to put out an album tomorrow. It's just like the goal today is we need to get a video out next week. There so you how go. do we fill that need? How do that. we how do we reach <laughs> that goal? That goal. Yep. <laughs> and we're like, That's we it. need a guy who knows how to do videos. <laughs> and then then it just kind of it progresses naturally from there. That's cool. And so, how long you been with Roland now? How are the two uh, guys working? Man, ever since since we started. So this like in you know two thousand one. Wow. Two thousand one or so. Since the very I'm a beginning. loyal guy. I'm a loyal yeah. guy. So anybody that's been around me for that long. That's who's a part of my business. I don't, you know, yep. th- th- those are guys that I feel like deserve to be a part of what I got going on. So, yeah, Roland was there. He's a, he's been the, the longest person I've been knowing in Atlanta, probably. Wow. So. Cool. That's great. And uh, so when it comes to uh, putting music out and setting up the sessions um, and all of that, is that what kind of he's he's handling? Uh, at times. Okay. I'm still, I'm still very, very hands on. Okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm still a relationship type of person. Yeah. If I'm talking, if it's, it's something to do with me and the artist, it's best believe I'm calling the artist or they calling me. You know, yep. nine times out of ten. Cool. Rolling helps come in and fill boards, or he might say, "Oh, sudden such trying to get in touch with you to do a session and or whatever." But other than that, yep. man, I'm on top of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm calling these guys, or I'm pulling up on them, or whatever it takes. Yeah. I do. So you're, you're partners, essentially. Partners, yeah. yeah. That's great. And uh, so it's kind of, I think a lot of uh, artists and producers, they look to a manager as like, okay, you're going to handle all the business. I'm just going to create. And even with you, somebody who creates so much every day, you're still very hands-on with your business and yeah. you're working with Roland hand-in-hand as, as partners. Exactly. That's cool. Um, in terms of, uh, like, there's this company, Opposition, Mm-hmm. And so for people who don't know Opposition, I mean, they're kind of this uh, full-on uh, artist services company. They do label service distribution, uh, mm-hmm. funding, uh, influencer marketing, uh, DSP strategy, playlisting, social strategy, brand development, PR, management, okay. everything. It's just yeah. like this all-in-one. Uh, what has your relationship been like with them? How did you start working with them? And also, uh, 
it's, it's these kind of companies are so new for the new music business. I'm curious about what your experience has been with a company like that. Uh, it's been great, man. We just put out our project, uh, the A Team with uh, Lil Yachty, Lil Keed, and Lil Got It. Mm-hmm. Uh, my first project done with them, and Roland brought those guys to me. You know, cool. he brought them to me. You know, now that type of stuff I don't really pay attention to. It's sure. like somebody had to bring it in front of me. Because right. if not, then it'll be one of those projects when you said you seen sixteen releases. It'll be right. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna put it out some kind of way in it. Right. You know, whether or not so. Roland brought them to me like, hey man, I think we should work with these guys. That, cool. You know, they can, you know, they can, you know, put take this project and do something big with it. So, uh, you know, mm-hmm. I'm like, let's do it. I create cool. so much music, you know. And one thing I like about companies like that, there's no, um, you know, you're not really locked in. You know, how you be locked in for five albums and you got right. to, to do stuff with this. It's almost like here, yeah, we do this together. If mm-hmm. this work out, you want to do something else, we can do something else. If not, you can do something with somebody else. You know, right. I like that. That's kind of the new music business model is that you don't need to sign a five album major label no. deal and then they own everything. It's kind of you're retaining all your ownership and you can at least, you you know, the terms are short. You can do a sure. project, an album, and yeah. it's uh, it's almost like a mutual level of respect. I like there. that. I like that. And it's uh, and so I, I love seeing these companies uh, that are that are starting and they they oftentimes have just the artist first mentality. Whereas like a lot of the majors, they kind of have the money first mentality, yeah. artist yeah. second, you know? Yeah. It's like, yeah. how can, and, and with an artist first mentality, it's like, we don't have to lock you into terms. You're going to want to choose to continue choose, to work yeah. with us because we continue to prove ourselves. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. So uh, in terms of just uh, what's happening next for you and, and, and what's going on in your world next, um, you know, especially, well, actually very timely. How are you working right now in quarantine? Uh, artists I'm assuming are not coming over to the place anymore. Do you have a workflow that has changed because you're in quarantine? Uh, believe it or not, I have one or two artists that, you know, still can come over and we get work done. Staying but six I, feet know, apart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah but it's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still working, man. I'm still yeah. working. Like, you know, one thing about, you know, the good thing about us as, as uh, you know, music creators that we, we got studios in our own home. Yeah. So I can make a beat right now, send it to the artist. Like I just did something with 2 chains this morning. He sent mm. it right back. And, it's, cool. you know, we can, can we can continue to work like that. Yeah. You know, so. That's what's, uh, you know, I was, I was talking to some friends about this. It's like this, this uh, pandemic has hit now and everything shut down and we're all in quarantine. However, Honestly, in, in the history of the world, it's kind of the best time for something like this to hit because we have the internet and because exactly. you're able to create and send somebody exactly. something and they can send it right back and you can send it to the cloud and you can even yeah. create almost in real time. There are programs in Ableton and stuff that you can do that. So it's like, yeah, it's a scary time. And especially for the artists that, you know, survive on, on the road and tours and mm-hmm. stuff like, and all the tours like that. That's challenging. And I feel for everybody. But at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm just constantly amazed at the, the creativity that's coming out of this by the limitations again and getting back to those limitations. That's it. And it's just like, it's inspiring more creativity in this era. And we're, we're seeing, um, you know, I, I'm actually really excited to see what comes out of this moment in history right now because of how we're, we're all locked away. Me yeah. too. I'm excited. Yeah, well, Zato, and I got one final question for you that I ask everybody who comes on the show. Um, I would like to know what um, it is, what does it mean to you to make it in the new music business? What it is to me to make it in the, uh, the new music business, I would say... It's just really being a household name, you know. Mm. I think a lot of people now. I mean, we have more than more than ever. You got I just seen producers make big records, platinum albums, and then still not have a notoriety. Don't nobody really know who they are. Mm. They haven't made a name, you know. What I mean, to make it in this day day and age, I feel like to make a name is is when you made it, you know. Right now. And cool. I think that's hard to do. That's hard to do now. Absolutely. You know I mean, you can make yeah. money. You know how this stuff is. You can make money and all that, but you're not going to be satisfied 
the people mm. know like, hey man, that's that's the guy right there. He the guy. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean, yep. so, <laughs> cool. You feel like you made it. Right on. Cool. Well, Zaytoven, thank you so much for uh, coming on the show and spending your uh, your quarantine with us right now. I enjoyed uh, it's it. It's been super insightful. And I know that all the artists and producers listening to this have gotten so much value out of it. So thank you so much. 